next three to four years, data seed investment in India is expected to reach almost $2 billion a year. Vikas Kanunga, senior consultant at the World Bank in the Digital Development Unit, joins me now to talk about infrastructure trends that are driving the market in India. Uh, Vikas, thanks a lot for talking to me. What are the main investment trends that you see in the Indian data center market today? Uh, see, basically, you have two huge programs in India. One is the Digital India Program of Government of India, and another is the National Smart Cities Mission. Uh, both of these projects uh, basically are looking at creating the entire digital infrastructure which would be able to not only talk to the data coming from citizens but also from sensors, from video cameras and all sorts of equipment. Uh, I guess uh, in order to pull that off, uh, a huge amount of infrastructure in terms of uh, the digital infrastructure would be required, but uh, uh, it will not purely be digital infrastructure, I would call it a physical and cyber integration where, okay. where even the buildings become smart. So you need infrastructure and connectivity to uh, basically make the analog components of the economy also smart. Okay. Well, when you look at the data center space, have you seen a lot of movements from investors, private equity? Um, in the last 24 months there's been a lot of investments coming to India, more than usual. It's been a bit of a boom in the data center space and this is expected to grow even more in the coming years. But what sort of things have you seen? What trends do you see? What can we expect from what we've seen so far? So, uh, uh, I mean, to begin with, we've, uh, you know, it started with uh, lots of uh, multinational players setting up their data centers in India. Uh, given the data protection and privacy rules, I guess data localization is also one of the key issues. But uh, we're seeing now that lots of Indian data center players, uh, especially the telcos who already have the capacity, and the large IT companies have also started uh, building their data centers. Okay. In addition, I think, uh, if you know, Government of India had long back built uh, state data centers in each of the states. Okay. They have now moved on to a national data center called uh, Megraj, which is, so which is a national it's cloud. A to one. Uh, it's not consolidation. Uh, this basically works as a backup. Okay. Or the uh, capacity augmentation where state data centers are totally uh, filled up. So you move some of the content to the national data center. Okay. And then do you see for some public and corporate funds working effectively together to get this funding all going? Uh, new builds? As of now, I guess uh, there is an investment which is being done by the public sector, which, which is totally, uh, uh, I think, different from what the pi private sector is doing. Private sectors so far have been, uh, you know, putting up all this infrastructure to cater to the needs of industry. But with the Digital India and Smart Cities mission, I guess the private sector looks at uh, the public sector also as a huge buyer. And uh, now lots of uh, very innovative uh, public-private partnership models are being worked out. And, and in terms of regulations, and this is not exclusive to India, it happens everywhere, Ireland, Nordic. Are there any challenges when it comes to regulations, politics? Um, we've heard yesterday about uh, the cloud India, we've heard about maybe dual permissions that need to be passed on if you need to put the fiber cable on the rail track, it's a really hard task to do. So what sort of regulatory issues do you see coming at the data center that needs to be addressed for this to really get off ground? I guess uh, when it comes to uh, the telecom infrastructure or uh, say for example the uh, repositories where data would be put. Okay. Uh, it becomes a little tricky issue as to which are the areas where you can involve private sector and which are the areas you, you cannot. And I guess Conflict that's not uh, 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 not true about India only, but I've been to uh, Ireland, I've been to it's a lot of countries. It's everywhere. Uh, I mean, if you talk about uh, some of the countries in Europe, the two cities don't share data with each other. Whereas in India, we are trying to move towards policies uh, of, uh, you know, where the entire uh, country uh, could uh, uh, become a one single integrated marketplace uh, or a digital marketplace. For that, I guess, uh, uh, I won't say that uh, the policies are in place at the moment, but uh, the intent from the government is there. But I guess uh, for a country like India, where you're talking about 1.2 billion people, the issues are uh, of scale, you know, how do you bring people who can, uh, you know, who have the experience of doing excellent work in uh, very small countries, how do they fit into you know, this kind of a scenario. So, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, from government side, the intent is there, 
but I think in order to thresh out what would be the right policies, right PPP model, what kind of infrastructure would be created, how do you make that infrastructure secure, and uh, given the fact that lots of MNCs are interested, how do you make sure that uh, you get your data when you need it if it is posted uh, somewhere in the cloud? Okay. And then finally, what's the World Bank doing to help drive the market? Uh, so basically, World Bank uh, uh, is unlike any other bank. Uh, the, the aim of the operations is to eradicate poverty. Mm -hmm. So wherever uh, uh, you know the agency sees that uh, any interventions which are digital in nature could uh, provide more livelihood opportunity to people, create more jobs, help eradicate poverty, enhance the efficiency of government services. They, uh, the tendency is to invest. So uh, not purely looking at uh, ROI kind of performance. Okay. So what sort of, are you looking at specific regions for investments or within India, different markets in India? Or are you focused on a specific market? Uh, no, I think uh, the bank's investment is across sectors. Okay. Uh, so it's not just... Uh, uh, so data centers uh, uh, kind of infrastructure becomes a means to do various things. Okay. It's not an end in itself. So the bank uh, uh, doesn't look at uh, specifically promoting a data uh, uh, center kind of uh, infrastructure. It looks at uh, providing good health, good education, uh, providing job opportunities to people and for achieving that if connectivity is required, data centers are required, okay. digital platforms are required, applications are required. So our focus is on the ecosystem, mm. not uh, uh, one component of the ecosystem in isolation. Okay, final question. If you had to describe the future of the Indian data center markets in one word, what word would you use? I would say uh, number one in the world in the next 15 years. Okay. That will be the biggest given the number of mobile phones. We have more than a billion mobile phones. We are putting sensors in 100 smart cities. But we have 44, more than 4,400 smart uh, cities in the country, which eventually will also uh, move up uh, to this path. So I guess uh, in terms of data economy, India would probably, along with China, be the leader in Asia Pacific. Okay. India more so because uh, in IT we have been, uh, I think, much ahead in the car compared to any other country. So one word would be leader for the future of the Indian that is in the market. In one word. I would say profitable. Profitable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vikas. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for talking to me. Thank um, you. Don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.